Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. And in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at alkene reactions. We're going to take a look at how the acidic halogens can add to a set of pi bonds and what would be the expected outcome in that situation. So that's all coming up on the channel right now. So thank you for learning with us today and head on over to chemcomplete.com for all of your learning needs. Now let's get started with the lecture here. The first thing that you want to do when you are looking at these types of reactions is to evaluate the electron density. So when we have an alkene, we want to look at its structure and evaluate it for electron density. Now we can do that by drawing a simple alkene and when we take a look at the alkene these are nothing but hydrocarbons right so as I draw this double bond the electron density is really going to be located around this set of pi electrons so sure there are electrons that are being shared covalently back and forth and you can make the same argument for this pi bond but the fact that we have those additional electrons in that bond means that it is going to be more reactive or a kind of a local area for electron density relative to all of the sigma bonds. Now, what is this going to be exposed to? Well, in this reaction, we are going to expose the alkene to either hydrochloric or hydrobromic acid. And you might see hydroiodic as well, but these are the two most common. So if I have, let's say HCl, and I want to evaluate this for electron density, I would say, well, there is a general density of electrons associated with the pi bond compared to the rest of the molecule here. So I can represent that with a delta minus. A delta minus is simply showing there's a partial negative buildup. Okay, this one's even more debatable. This is kind of more in the nonpolar region. There's not a huge separation of charge going on here. But the double bond is more reactive than the, sing uh, the single bond. Now, the hydrogen and the chlorine, on the other hand, have a very big difference in electronegativity. And so if we were to assess this, the chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogen. So what does electronegativity mean? It means that in a shared bonding relationship, the element with the higher electronegativity takes more of the shared electrons towards itself, right? And so the split that I would expect here would be partially negative here and partially positive for the hydrogen. So this sets up a situation where we can kind of mix and match, and this is exactly how you wanna approach most organic reactions, is that you say, where is there a dense or a rich region of electrons, and where is they, excuse me, where is there a deficient or a lack of electrons? And in that case, that's the hydrogen. So we are going to be able to send the pi electrons out to the hydrogen, and then that shared bond will go to the chlorine, which is more electronegative. That's kind of the mechanism that we'll be coming up on here. Okay, but now that we've evaluated that for electron density, we also want to talk about carbocation stability, okay, because we are going to find that a carbocation will occur in this reaction. So as a general review, carbocation stability is going to be that methyls would be the least. In fact, those are so uh, unstable or non-stable that they don't even exist. We don't uh, contemplate or consider or give any credence to a methyl carbocation. Okay? Now, that is the lowest on the list. Improved from there would be primary. Again, not very stable. Secondary, which is certainly plausible at that point. And then much greater than that would be the tertiary carbocation. Right? Now, there is also up in the tertiary realm any type of carbocation that could be resonance stabilized. So if you have resonance available to delocalize a carbocation over two or more atoms, that would kind of be in the ranking of tertiary. It's hard to make a one-to-one -one comparison there. All right now, to review why this is the case, the reason behind this is hyperconjugation. And for those of you that may not be familiar with hyperconjugation, I do cover this on my channel. 
So in the um, the description box down below, I will make sure I leave a link to the hyperconjugation lecture so that you can check it out in more detail and it makes sense. But hyperconjugation, in a brief summary, goes like this. When you have a carbocation, it's going to exist, okay, and I hate to say the term exists, it's really just an absence of electrons, but the carbocation is in a p orbital, right? That p orbital is looking for electrons. And so the more of these neighbors that you have that are hydrocarbons, okay, instead of just a hydrogen, for instance, like this, if you have these CHs, these bonds right here between the C and the H can align themselves and kind of partially donate through inductive effects some small amount of stability, okay, because this bond right here is made up of electrons, and so its relative proximity or alignment to a p orbital that needs electrons is beneficial. Now, if you just have a hydrogen, you cannot do that. You don't have the proper alignment. So this is why we see that methyls are the lowest on the list because a methyl, if I had a carbocation for a methyl, right, it would just have the three hydrogens. It would have no hyperconjugation available to it. And as far as stability purposes, that would be off the table. However, if I have something that's, let's say, secondary, right? So if I have a carbocation that's secondary here, this carbocation would receive hyperconjugation from two of its neighbors. So here's one, right? I'm not drawing all the hydrogens involved here. Here's two. And then it could have just a hydrogen here. So it would receive stability from this alignment, and it would also receive stability from this alignment. So hopefully you can see as we continue to build up the hydrocarbons around the carbocation, we increase its stability and likelihood of forming due to hyperconjugation. And that is a very important premise for understanding the reaction that we are going to be going through here. So let's do a quick run through of the reaction, and then we can take a look at some of the mechanistic and synthetic details here. So I'm going to go through this very fast, and then we'll take a look at it in more detail. So if I have an alkene, we'll keep with the same example that we were using before, and that alkene is exposed to hydrochloric acid. The question is, what would be the product? Okay, so the product in a case like this would be that the double bond is removed and then the chlorine will be added to the more substituted position. Okay. This doesn't even include stereochemistry consequences at the moment, which would need to be considered or contemplated because this right here has become a chiral center. And if this chlorine, let's say, adds from the front, you could also get a chlorine, right, that could add from the back because, as we're going to see in the mechanism, if it attacks a carbocation, a carbocation is sp2 hybridized, meaning it's trigonal planar, it's flat. And therefore, you could get attack at both sides, so you can get what's called a racemic mixture. You can get a mixture of both enantiomers when you get the final product. All right, now let's get into some of the detail, the mechanism and the synthetic breakdown. Why does this occur? All right, well, if we take a look at it, going back to the general uh, breakdown of the electron density, we've got the pi bond with a relative high density of electrons. It's ready to react. We've got the hydrogen that has a lack of electrons, and then we've got the chlorine that's electronegative, and technically we haven't been showing it, right? But the chlorine would have the lone pairs there. Okay, so if this pi bond has high density, the electrons would move from here and would seek out the hydrogen that is kind of deficient. So they could donate some of their electron property to that hydrogen. The chlorine being electronegative, is going to take the shared electrons here because hydrogen cannot be involved with two bonds at the same time. That would violate its valency as far as only being able to have two electrons in that 1s orbital. So when this happens, you're going to get what's called an intermediate, and the intermediate is going to be a carbocation. So keep in mind, I'm going to kind of draw off to the side here for a moment what we're talking about. This carbon-carbon double bond, right, is being shared between the two carbons. So if the pi electrons are now going to attach to a hydrogen, 
it has to let go of one of these carbons, right? So in other words, we have a bond forming between the carbon and a hydrogen, and the other carbon that does not receive this hydrogen is going to be deficient in electrons, and that becomes the carbocation. Whoops. So the question becomes, which of these two positions would take the hydrogen? And the question really should be stated as which carbocation should form, right? Because it's the, the stability of the carbocation is really driving the other one as far as receiving the hydrogen. So when we look at this, if I were to evaluate this, I could either get a carbocation on the very end here, that would be primary, or I could get a tertiary carbocation. So let's come down here, excuse me, a secondary, not a tertiary. Okay, so if we come down here, the options would be that I could get a carbocation here. And if I got a carbocation here, the hydrogen, which we don't necessarily have to show, it's implied with these skeletal structures, but we can show it for the sake of this, right? We've got the hydrogen that's added here. Or we could have this, which would be a primary carbocation, right? The hydrogen adds here. So the question you have is which of these two is more likely to form? And the answer is the first one up here. The secondary is more likely to form because we get more hyperconjugation as a result. So this would be the correct intermediate. And we also have the chlorine off in solution. So you can't forget that now that we have broken apart that hydrochloric acid, we now have a chlorine sitting out in solution with a formal negative charge. Well, a carbocation looking for electrons and a chlorine with an excess of electrons are a perfect match, and you'll get the attack here, right? So this is going to come in and it'll attack that secondary carbocation, and this will provide you with the correct product. Now, again, I want to mention this is this carbocation here is sp2 hybridized, okay, which as a result means that it's going to be trigonal planar. And anything that's trigonal planar is flat. So when you have a flat attack site, you can have the chlorine coming in from both directions. It could attack from the front or the back. And when that's the case, you can get a mixture. If you are going to have a chiral center in your product, right, you would get a mixture of the chlorine attacking from the front position. And you could also get the chlorine attacking from the back position. So it's really a 50-50 mixture. Now sometimes you may see in uh, textbooks and things like that, it'll say plus enantiomer or plus racemic mix. And that's just saying, yes, in a 50-50 ratio, the other version will also form, okay? But as long as you're aware of that, that's what's kind of important here. So to finish this off, let's just pose one more here. Okay, if I had a structure that looked like this, a five-membered ring, and then I had the double bond coming off of the ring like this, if I were to expose this to HBr, what would be the product? So take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can figure this out. All right, hopefully you had time to work through this. Now, the pi bond would come to this hydrogen, the bromine would go off into solution, and so the intermediate, and it's fine if you didn't do the mechanism because I didn't technically ask you to, okay, but it's good to practice, the intermediate here would be that the pi bond is broken apart and the carbocation would be right here. It would be at this site, right, where we have kind of the joining of these, uh, these two positions here, right? The ring and the methyl group that's coming off there. And so the bromine could come in and could attack at that site. And when it does, you would get your final product. And the final product here after this intermediate would be that you have the five membered ring, you would have the methyl group and you would have the bromine. Okay. Now, in this case, we would not have to deal with the racemic mixture or the discussion of chirality because this right here is not a chiral center, right? If we go around the ring, it's symmetrical on that left side of the ring there. So this would just be the final product as it stands here. 
So that is it for discussion of how we examine or look at the addition of HCl and HBr to alkenes. This is usually one of the first reactions students are exposed to in the alkene chapter because it's pretty easy to follow. So like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for using ChemComplete as your uh, learning resource. ChemComplete.com has lots of affordable guides to help get you through your semester. And we also have a lot of free resources over there. So check it out. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.